Okay, um, I am going to start the class. Good morning, everyone. I don't have any students at this moment, but uh, I suppose that you will see and you will watch this class in the coming future. And so we're going to work today uh, mainly with, uh, with the following things. Okay, we're going to have uh, some uh, reviews of the things that we were covering last class and uh, we're going to go forward with the last point of the unit five and then we will continue with unit 6c which is the last unit on this semester okay so let's start by um a, a guide that i sent you uh, in the previous class, okay? I'm going to share a screen with you. So I'm going to work with that. Um, you had certain exercises to do, right? But uh, we're going to check them today, okay? This is the one that I want you to see or want you to observe. Uh, the thing here is the questions with how long, how many, how much, and how often. Yeah, usually these are kind of complicated because students sometimes don't understand when to use each one of them, okay? In a general way, you, have, you use how long to talk about the length, the longitud, the largo, the length of an activity, yeah? How long meaning how much time did you devote? For example, uh, how long have you been living in Valparaiso. That means when did you start living in Valparaiso and up to now, how many years have you been living in the in the place? Okay. How many usually is used with countable nouns? For example, how many books, how many students, how many theaters, um, etc. How much is is used with the uh, uncountable nouns? For example, how much tea how much coffee, how much, um, I don't know, how much uh, time do you devote to do this or that, okay? In here, you have certain examples, yeah? For example, also you have the, the word, how many times, how many times is the, um, the, the number of times in which you perform the activity? Yeah, it says here, how many times and how long always confuses me. Please give me an answer. That was the question that one person sent. How many times and how long, okay? And this is the reply, and we are going to try to explain this to you, okay? It says here, how long is used to ask questions about amounts or periods of time? Take a look at the following. For example, how long have you been waiting? Yeah, only for a minute or two, yeah. The amount of time, how long the amount of time that you have been waiting, okay? How long have they been married? The same thing, the amount of time. Oh, for a very long time, more than 25 years, okay? How long will be the concert last? Sorry, how long will the concert last? It should be over by 10 or 10 o'clock, I think, yeah? It should be over by 10 o'clock, I think. How long? the number of hours that it's going to last. How long was your stay in Malaysia? The project lasted for two years, but I was there for two and a half years. How long have you been living in this house? For 12 years. Now, ever since my mother died. How much longer can you stay? Not much longer. For another 10 minutes, perhaps. I have to be home before midnight. Note that this construction is often used with the preposition for or since in the reply. All right. Another way it says here, how long can also be used to ask about the measured length of something. Study the following. For example, how long was the wedding dress? Yeah, in this case, it's talking about the length, el largo, yeah? No la duración. Not the duration of it. How long meaning could be? How long, cuánto tiempo? How long, cuál largo es algo? Yeah. How long was the wedding dress? It was very short. 
knee length really. Okay, it was up to the knee, not longer than that. As you know, usually the, the wedding dresses are very long, yeah, with a long tail, etc., and very elegant. In this case, the, the one that, I, the, the, that they are talking here is uh, a short dress, up to the knee only, knee length, really. I see you're growing your hair. How long do you want it to be? Shoulder length, at least, up to here. Not my case, of course, but in this case, all right? Uh, now, if you use a construction, how many times you are inquiring about the specific number of occasions something has happened? Study the following. Yeah. In this case, how many times you talk about the occasions, the times, all right? Not the time, the times. How many times have you read the, that book? At least 10 times. I really like it. How many times did you visit them last summer? Almost every weekend. How many times did the phone ring last night? We must have had about 20 calls. How many times have I told you not to play football in the garden? Yeah. So in this case, how many times is the number of occasions in which you perform an activity, right? For example, how many times have you um, traveled to, uh, to the north of Chile? How many times have you, um, have you got a seven in English? How many times have you got a seven in English? Many times, a few times, only once or twice, I don't know, right? See, how many times, meaning how many, uh, uh, the number of occasions in which you have done that, or you have got a seven. That is the idea. Note that the construction, how often, is more vers versatile and is used more frequently than how many times. How often, meaning in Spanish, con que frecuencia? How many times, cuantas veces? They're very similar. But according to this uh, article, how often is more used than how many times? When you use this construction, you're asking about how frequently something happens, unlike how many times, which usually refers to past occasions. Yeah. How often is used to refer to past, present, and future situations. Took a look at the following examples. How often do you play, no, how often do you plan to play tennis this summer? As often as possible. Every day, if I can. How often will you visit your mother in hospital? I shall, I shall try to visit at least once a week. How often did you go to the cinema when you were young? Every weekend, without fail. There was no television then. How often do you go to the big supermarket to do your shopping? Not very often, perhaps once a month. When you lived in London, how often did you go to the theater? We used to go three or four times a year, something like that. Yeah, that's the idea. Con que frecuencia? How often do you plan to play? How often will you visit? Okay, in this case, how often usually is used in any, in any time. Could be present, could be future, could be past, etc. Yeah. Excuse me, but uh, my wife was asking me about my father. Okay. Yeah. And here I have some ex uh, exercises that I have that I had given to you. I can't remember if I gave them last class for you to do it. So we're going to try to do some of them. It says here: ask the appropriate question using how long. How many, how much, how often, etc. Uh, the, the answer says, well, we moved to Valparaiso in 2001 and we have lived here since then. So this is the part that you have to understand. I think here it should be since then. Sorry, in here. We have lived here since then. So what would be the question? 
how many, how much, how often, how long, how many times? According to the answer would be how long, right? So it would be how long have you lived in Valparaiso? How long have you lived in Valparaiso? Okay, that would be the answer. Oops, I don't know why I did this. Yeah, how long have you lived in Valparaiso? The answer would be, well, we moved to Valparaiso in 2001 and we have lived here since then, all right? Yeah, then number two, she's very thin now because she goes to the gym every day. She's very thin now because she goes to the gym every day. So that would be the, we have to answer about this because she goes to the gym every day. So means, meaning with what frequency she goes to the gym every day. That is the answer. So would be then how often does she go to the gym? That would be the answer. I'm going to try. Yeah, there, there we go. How, would, how often does she go to the gym? Okay. I'm going to try to move this also up by reducing the length. There we go. How long have you lived in Valparaiso? Well, we moved to Valparaiso in 2001 and we have lived there. We have lived here since then. How often does she go to the gym? She's very thin now because she goes to the gym every day. Yeah, the Titanic at least five times. That is the five times. That is the, the what is telling you the question, five times. So. How many times that would be? So, okay, Kim is coming. Hi, Kimberly. Hola, profe. I was uh, sharing the screen at this moment, but okay. Oh, okay. So I was, there we go. I was uh, asking, we're learning, I mean, reviewing how to ask questions with how long, how often, how much, how many time, how many, etc. So I was uh, doing this exercise, for example, in here, the question is at least five times. So the, 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 the answer, sorry, at least five times. So how many times have you, have you seen the Titanic? Yeah, let's see. I'm going to try to. Yeah, that would be the question. How many times are you seeing ah, the Titanic? I don't know how to do it. Yeah, the Titanic at least five times. Now, the, the next one, um, uh, Kimberly, it says the answer is we haven't spent a lot in this town. It is very cheap in here. What would be the question? Do you How think? much money have you spent in this town? Right, perfect. How much money have you spent in this town? Okay, I'm not going to write it because I'm going to take so much, so much. Okay, the next one is, I started working here when I was 25 years, more than 20 years. What would be the How question? How long have you worked here? Again, repeat, please. How long have you worked here? Okay, you can use, that is correct. You can use how long have you worked, or if you want to give, give it more like a continuation in the action, how would, how would you do it? Mm, how many years have you worked here? Okay, that's correct. But with how long? <laughs> with how long? Um, I don't know. But using working, how long? Mm, I don't really know. 
think, because the idea is correct. You, how long have you worked? But that means that uh, at the moment it, it's kind of stopped. But I want you to ask him, the, the person is still working at the oh, moment. Oh, okay, I got it. How long have you been working here? Right, that is, that is more specific, you see? How long have you been working? Because I started working here when I was 25 years, more than 20 years, so the guy is still working. So how long have you been working here? That's correct. Oops, I think that is one more here, one more left. Oh, I lost it. Yeah, I think I've never been really in love in my life. What would be the question? I don't know, there is another one here. Uh, I think this quarantine will not finish until November. Um, how long do you think the quarantine is going to last? Yeah, how long do you think the quarantine, the quarantine will last or is going to last? I think this current quarantine, some people say quarantine and quarantine, will not finish until November. And the last one, I think I've never been really in love in my life. Um, have you ever been in love? Yeah, have you ever been in love in your, lo in your life? Okay, with how many times? Can also how many ask, times? Yeah. How many times have you been in love? How long? How many times have you been in love in your life? All right. Okay. Uh, another one here, number six. I we haven't done number six. I know her since we were in high school. How long have you known her? Yeah, how long have you known her? All right. Okay. And if you use meet. Mm. ¿Cuándo la conociste? Using the, the simple past. Mm. When did you meet her? Yeah. When did you meet her? And the answer, the answer could be this way. I know her since we were in high school. Okay? Both are okay. correct. Okay, good. So the idea here was in a little bit of reviewing what we saw last class, which was the present perfect simple, the present perfect continuous, and also the past tense, which are tenses that are sometimes connected, okay, as we saw last class. Um, here also, uh, we did some exercises with how long, how much, how many, how many times, etc. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the, with the book. Um, okay, so we're going to um, watch the video in the last part of, the, uh, of this unit. And with this, we're going to finish unit five, right? Okay. The title is a disappearing world. That is the title of the uh, of this uh, video. Oh. What do you think is called like that? According to the image that you see here, what is disappearing? What is it? you ask? What is disappearing? Mm -hmm. According, yeah, I think it is it's disappearing. About, I think he's talking about how the world is losing all its nature. Yeah, all right. So okay. Maybe like the plants and all of that, it's gone. Yeah. Usually they, they talk about the, um, uh, the forests, okay? The forests are disappearing. This forest, the humid forests, tropical forests, okay, are disappearing because people start logging. Do you understand the word logging? Mm, no. Uh, logs are pieces of wood like this size. Uh -huh, yes. Oh, so they start like cutting it? Yeah, right. Okay, got it. And there is a verb for that. So you, there is a log, which is a piece of wood. Uh, so sometimes they put it in when in, in the railways, you know, you have logs in there. In that way. And that, the railways are like this, and then you have logs in there. So there is a verb. Log means to cut the trees. Before going into the, into the, um, the video, uh, I would like you to read the vocabulary, okay? Which is, uh, there, some vocabulary is going to appear here, which is uh, a little bit uh, more complicated, okay? So let's see, let's see it here. Okay, um, so uh, Kimberly, read the vocabulary and see if you understand everything. Okay, read. Okay, so just from the beginning? Yeah, from the beginning. Okay. So aim, objective, challenge, okay something that tests a person's abilities, collect, pick up or bring things together, desperate, 
needing to change a very bad situation, gem, something very valuable, logging, cutting down trees on a large scale, overwhelmed, feeling very emotional, rapids, oh, that I didn't know, uh, part of a river where the water flows very fast, usually over and between rocks, okay, record, written information about something, rise, go up, stepping stones, large stones that people walk on to cross the river. All right, which one did, didn't you know? Uh, rapids and stepping stones. Stepping stones, you didn't know that. What about overwhelmed? Yeah, I've heard that in movies a lot. Yeah, okay, what about gem? Yes, they always say a hidden gem. Yeah, all right, okay. So in general, you knew most of the vocabulary, but uh, okay. This one, uh, this uh, video is going to show you some vocabulary related to this, related to the disappearing of the world. Okay, so let's go into that in, in order to watch the video, and then we're going to discuss a little bit about it. Uh, before, before you watch, Cecilia, what do you think this video is about? According to the... Uh, according to the title and the and what you saw in there. I told you before, I think that it's about how nature is coming to an end because people are exploding it way too much. Yeah. Okay, do you know what a rainforest is? Mm, it sounds familiar, but I don't really remember. Yeah, you know what a forest is, right? Yes. Yeah, like a wood, but a forest is, I think, bigger than a, a wood. And uh, the forest, it, the rainforests are the ones that have lots of rains. So it has a very cold weather and humid weather. That is a rainforest. What animals can you, do you think you, you see in a, or can you find in a, in a rainforest? Maybe a cockadrow. Yeah. Mm. A lot of insects. Right. Mosquitoes, insects, yes. Maybe reptiles. Yeah, okay. Gorillas are very typical in, in rainforests. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Right. Gorillas are very typical in rainforests. Okay, what about the, the second question? Which parts of the world have rainforests, do you think? I think maybe like the southern, like Asia, probably like Thailand and all those places, like they have very humid weather, I guess. And like they probably have like big forests and stuff like that. Yeah. Any other place? I'm not sure. Um, maybe the Amazon. <laughs> the know. Amazon, right. Okay. In Africa. And, okay, yeah, in Africa. In Africa, yeah. you can find. Okay, but, um, well, it's usually they are placed in the, between the three lines, the tropics, okay? The equator and the tropics of uh, Capricorn and the uh, equator, right? In those places are uh, this rainforest. It's a place where you can have a lot of humidity and lots of rains at the same time. Okay, uh, so what do you know about the rainforest and its problems? Well, we all know that they are kind of disappearing and we're going to see a little bit of them right now. Okay, so let's see. Wait, wait for a while. September in the Congo, just north of the equator, an expedition unlike any other is beginning. A team of scientists and researchers is traveling almost 1,200 miles through a rainforest that covers over 5,800 square miles. Their aim is to make a scientific record of a world which could be disappearing from Earth, the Congo Basin. Dr. Michael Fay is a scientist from the Wildlife Conservation Society. He's leading the expedition he calls the Mega Transat, or the Big Crossing. According to Fay, if they don't document the wildlife here now, there may never be another chance to do it. What I'm trying to do in a desperate way is to show the world that, that we're just about to lose the last little gem in the African continent. And if we don't do something now, if we don't do it today, um, we can forget about it. The Congo Basin contains almost one quarter of the world's rainforests. It may have up to half of all the wild plants and animals found in all of Africa. Faye's plan is to collect and record data on almost every part of the rainforest. He wants to document the trees, the plants, and the animals that he sees there. It's a job that's going to take time. 
After eight months of traveling, the team is now in Gabon. Their next challenge is to reach a group of strange hills that are made of stone and which rise far above the forest floor. At last, the men reach the hills and begin to walk up. Suddenly, they realize that they're finally above the tops of the trees. We can see a long way here, you know, 70 or 80 kilometers in every direction. see a tree 60 degrees around. There are no humans. There's not a single village. There's not a single road. The team continues. They can hear their next challenge before they reach it. Rapids. The Congo shoots are an important part of the landscape that the team wants to protect. This land of fast water and old forests is in danger because of logging. Right now, the team has a more immediate problem. They must cross the dangerous river here. It's only about 600 feet wide, but the team must use guide ropes, stepping stones, and everything they know to get across. It takes a full day, and there's still a long way to go. After more than a year, the team finally reaches the end of their travels. We've been walking in the woods in our own little world for 15 months. And that was over. I was overwhelmed. After Faye's expedition walked through some of the wildest lands of Africa, they documented as many of the things they found as possible, and they did it all in an attempt to save a disappearing world. Okay. Uh, that's it. So, um, uh, Kimberly, can you tell me anything about what you what you heard? Or what what you watched? Anything that you can remember now? Um, basically, it was like an expedition that this guy did because he wanted to see the wildlife in this part of the rainforest mm -hmm. because he was afraid that he, there was never going to be another chance to do that. So they ended up doing this expedition for like fifteen months, and yeah. All right. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that? Uh, could you understand or remember the name of the of this expedition? <laughs> oh, it was it had a hard name. I don't remember. It. Yeah. The Mega Transect. The Mega Transect. Okay. So he they 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 walked for a long long distances and, and then they wanted to record all the wildlife that they could see in order to know and protect those uh, animals that are in danger of extinction, but also to protect the, the the nature that they are destroying. Okay, that was the idea of this uh, of this uh, uh, mega transect. Okay, um, here there are some exercises that we could do. Some of them. Um, what do you think we could do in order to protect our nature in general? Because this is happening in in there. But sorry, I did number six. Uh, but it's also happening in Chile. How do you think we could protect our wildlife? I think uh, we should stop cutting down trees and saving more water and start being start eating vegetables instead of meat. And yeah. What about <laughs> what about the loss? Oh yeah, I agree. There's no law really to help animals. Yeah, in general, for example, nowadays, if you have the money, you can do whatever you want and nobody protects the environment, okay? Now I think that people are um, being more conscious about what is happening with the, how they are destroying sometimes, okay? Uh, they say, well, we are going to give a lot of work for a lot of, for a lot of people, but at the same time, they are going to be destroying right so that what is better okay give work or destroy the environment i think that probably you could do something but not as much as what they are doing now okay look at this exercise four in here put events in the order you see them in the video you have in here looking over treetops writing a journal filming an elephant reaching the sea climbing a hill crossing rapids traveling in a canoe what do you think is the first thing that we saw in the video can you repeat the question, the first uh, event? Yep. What was the order in there? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't really know about that. I, I focus on, on, on the exercise five, and I just didn't pay attention to the first um, exercise. So I don't really know, but I think maybe... Let's see here. Probably... Um, yeah, 
There you go. What was the first thing that we saw in the video? Um, I don't know, sorry. I think the first one was filming an elephant. That is, ah, in here you have to do it like this. Filming an elephant. At the beginning of the video, they start like filming an elephant. Then, oof, it's difficult. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think the next one would be traveling in a canoe. Okay. There was the basin of the of the place. Do you understand the word basin? No. The basin is like I don't know. Um, it's a I don't know how to explain that, but it's la cuenca. That is the basin. Okay. It's B a s i n basin. When they they show the basin of the uh, of the forest, and then they were in a canoe, I think. Uh, then. I think it was climbing a hill, probably. Mm -hmm. Climbing a hill. Then, when they climbed the hill, they started looking over tree tops, right? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. ah no, I think that first of first of that it was writing a journal. That, oh, that is number one. No, I was a female elephant. Then number two would be like, let's see, number two would be uh, writing a journal, I think, I think. Then number three, traveling a canoe. Number four, climbing a hill. Number five, looking over treetops. Then number C, crossing the rapids. Yeah, and I think so. Finally. It would be reaching the sea because that was the end. When they they reached the sea, they started like saying goodbye to everyone. Okay, let's see if we're correct. You're right. <laughs> How can I do this? With the check mark, I think so. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> so. it was first traveling yes. a canoe. Traveling a canoe and then writing a journal. Okay, good. Uh, okay, that's it then um, in relation to this. Uh, I would like you to ask uh, if you did this with Miss Patty or not, or if it is necessary to do it right now. I think it's necessary to do it now because I don't remember doing that. And I think she told us to tell you to be in charge of the review. Okay, so I will. Okay, so let's see a little bit of this. Um, It says here, look at the photo, discuss the question. Where do, where do wild gorillas live? Well, we know now in the rainforest, right? Now, what are the problems facing gorillas in the wild, do you think? We don't know, but what do you think? Mm, I think from different predators and also humans that want to um, catch them. Yeah. And yeah, I think they're pretty strong, so I don't think they have that many problems. I imagine they are, they are huge. I, I've never seen a gorilla, I think in a zoo probably, but I imagine they are huge. So um, I think that if you face them in the wild, it would be like very scary. Do you think they yeah. are violent or aggressive? I, I don't know. I think they are, but they also seem very sweet sometimes, so I don't really know. I think it depends. If, did you see once uh, uh, an image from? I remember that an image in a in a in a zoo, in which one little girl, I think it was a yeah. little girl, a little yeah. girl, went down, and the 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 gorilla, the mama gorilla, I think, protected it. And yeah, she was protecting it in, in in her arms. It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, but they actually. Um, sacrificed that gorilla because they said that the, that gorilla was too aggressive but i think that she was protecting the little girl it's just that she didn't she's not like going to be sweet because obviously she's used to like taking care of her own uh, baby gorillas like that so she's not going to know how to treat a little kid so yeah. but yeah they ended up killing that gorilla it was sad yeah okay 
Uh, we're going to read the article and check your ideas from exercise one and then choose the correct options, all right? So let's see here, I'm going to put it bigger and we're going to try to read it. Uh, okay, um, Kimberly, start reading. You have to choose one of the options you have in there, for example, face to awesome. face. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so while gorillas um, have faced many challenges in recent years, I think so. Have faced. Okay. Yeah, have faced is correct. I will commercial... stop you if you're not right, okay? Okay. Commercial hunters left several young gorillas on orphaned. I would say that have been leaving several young okay. mountain gorillas orphaned, okay? Not left because the action, I mean, the hunters are still there. So yeah. if you said okay. left, that means that there are no more hunters. So no, there are no, there is no more hunt. But I think that the hunt continues. So have been leaving yeah. several young mountain gorillas orphaned. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the Ebola virus has devastated the population of lowland gorillas. gorillas. Okay. Um, gorilla numbers have declined at a disturbing rate. Mm, down over 50% since the 1990s. In 2007, their status changed from endangered to critically, critically endangered. Do you understand that idea? Yeah. All right. It's like okay. it went from a very pro problematic situation to an extreme problematic situation. Yeah, all right. Um, projects such as the Project Protection Les Gorillas yeah. res um, have rescued young gorillas and they have um, they let me see have been, and they have been encouraged encourage them encouraging them so I, I I wrote have been is that good well I mean I think in this case have encouraged or have been encouraging them I mean it makes no difference okay yeah, there, there is no difference I mean the only difference is that the, the guys are still doing it so I think you're right okay okay encourage them to form a new social new social groups hoping to give them a second chance in the wild meanwhile the to counter the threat of the threat. Ebola virus, Peter Walsh and others have been working on a vaccine that will prevent the transmission of the virus among gorillas all right pretty good that's the idea uh, now, in here it says the question, have you been to any of these places? A safari park, a wildlife sanctuary, or a zoo? Have what you is there? wildlife sanctuary? I think that these kinds of like protected areas, wildlife oh. areas, where you can't touch, you know, um, animals, okay? That is a sanctuary. A wildlife sanctuary you don't you cannot for example destroy the vegetation either right that is a, a sanctuary okay? okay it's like their natural habitat or something like that right because there are some safari parks in which you go and uh, some people have safaris in there all right so they kill animals yeah, yeah. but in the other ones in a wild sanctuary they cannot touch the animals and they are legally protected or you know also you cannot you cannot touch the the vegetation the trees etc so if you do that you're going to get a fine for that you have to pay for that okay i think we don't have here any of those probably only a zoo uh, but in in any of your trips uh kimberly have you ever gone to any kind of uh place like this a wild wildlife sanctuary i have not been even to a safari park i have only been to the zoo yeah which which zoos do you know well i know the ones in the states in new york it's a very big one and i have also been to the one here in santiago 
Yeah, the one Winsaw. I went I last summer. Yeah, the Winsaw. I, I mm -hmm. haven't gone to that uh, zoo. I would like to I go there. Yeah, I would like to go there. Down. Did you like it? Uh, yeah, I really liked it. It was a really nice place, and I think that the animals were very well taken care of. Yeah, all right. They were in shape and all of that. But I think it's closing down because of the virus. They they supposedly have no money to feed the animals, but I think it's a lie. I, because yeah, continue. Yes, I think it's a lie because those the owner of that uh, zoo has a lot of money. He also has other companies, so it's impossible for him to be uh, completely broke, considering yeah. that the the fee to go to this zoo is like. Um, Almost ten thousand pesos. Yeah, for one person. Yeah, all right. It's you a, never go by yourself, so you always go with a family. So, but I don't I know now what is happening with them because you know nowadays people can't go, so it's kind of complicated. It's being complicated for them. The other day I heard that they were asking for help in order to continue helping yeah. the animals. I think that's a strategy. Because I mean, the the crisis has only been for like eight months, you know, for the estallido social, the crisis, yeah. right, that happened, and for the virus, and that started like it's been like eight months in total. So how come they don't have like savings from all of those years that everything the business was good for them? So yeah, I think it's well, it's kind of, but sometimes you know, when you have money, you don't think that something like we had. We have having, we have suffering, may happen, you know. In 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 but fact, has you, you don't know. well, it's good to protect yourself by saving money. But some people do not do it. Okay, you just no. We can I have mean, like a, for two months or one month, but now it's been too long, and the problem is that you cannot see like uh, that this is going to stop one day. All right, so that is the the, the main problem. I imagine people that were. In, in businesses like this, um, they might be suffering. Two reasons or things like that, they are, they are suffering, okay? So it's a, you, you never know what's gonna happen. So you protect yourself with money for yeah. one month, two months, three months, but in this case, it's been like eight months and we are not going to stop, it seems, for a long time. You have no faith. I think it, would, it will pass soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think okay. that he's just playing the victim card because he has other companies as well. So, yeah, I think he just wanted something. Okay, but money well. on animal. Okay, um, Thierry, what about you? Have you ever gone to any of those zoos? I mean, the 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 Buin Zoo or the the National Zoo in Santiago or the one in Quilpue? Yes. Which one have you visited? Uh, I visited the Winsaw and some zoo in Kilpue. All right. Okay. Which one did you like the most? Um, none of them, but Winsaw is more funny. Yeah, it's funnier, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I've been in some zoos. I remember that when I was a child, long time ago, I went to the zoo in Santiago. Uh, then I think I went to the one in Buenos Aires once. It's bigger, much bigger than the one in Santiago. And then in, in the United States, I visited a zoo in uh, in Minnesota. It was a very special zoo because it was uh, it has animals, winter animals. You know, I mean, for example, polar bears or you know, tigers, white tigers, uh, animals that are used to the, to the very cold weather. Because in Minnesota, you the weather is so low, you know that uh, sometimes you have. 20 degrees below zero, 30 degrees below zero. So I went in winter and they have animals that we normally don't see here. And it was a lot of fun. I liked it very much. And the spaces were bigger. You know, the, the animals were not in cages, were in open places. Although for them, sometimes it's, everything is small. Okay, but it was kind of fun. I liked it. Okay, um, let's continue with this. Uh, now, Work in pairs, no, not in pairs. In this case, we should have one out in each group. This is the one that does not correspond. Um, yeah, for example, you have number one, exotic, plain, peaceful, and vibrant. Which is the one that you think is, is not connected? Exotic. Uh-huh. 
or vibrant? I would say plane. Plane. Ah, yes. Yeah, because that's a means of transportation. The other ones are uh, uh, descriptions of uh, cities. A city can be vibrant, peaceful, or exotic. Okay. What about number two? Um, Kimberly, cruise, peaceful, package, and safari. I wrote package. I feel like it doesn't make sense, that sentence. No. Mm, then I don't know. <laughs> peaceful? Peaceful. Because cruise is a way of, uh, way of uh, uh, you know, touring. A package tour and a safari is another way of traveling, you know. You go to safaris, you go to package with package tours and cruises. But peaceful is kind of, a, you know, an adjective, right? And the other ones are nouns. Uh, fly food, nightlife, weather. Which is the odd one? Food. Mm -mm. Or fly. Fly. Fly is a verb. The other ones are, are nouns and they describe uh, tourism. For example, when you go to a place, you want to know about the weather of the place, the nightlife of the place, and the food, the restaurants of the place, right? Uh, okay, um, Kimberly, theater, trash, ticket, and waste. Uh, ticket? Yeah, ticket. And what, what are the others? It's talking about like waste in general. Garbage, yeah, right? Yeah. They're synonyms, litter, trash, and waste. Just, you know, uh, garbage in general. And the last one, the other, journey, journey, ocean, tour, and trip. Ocean. Ocean, that's right. Yeah. A journey, a tour, and a trip are synonyms. All right, good. Let's move into the other part in here. It says, um, where do tourists go in our country? Where do they go? What are the places, favorite places to visit in Chile? You think? Mention some Michigan? of them. I think what? the south of Chile. Maybe like, uh, um, there's a place called Ojos del Caburga, which is like a waterfall. Yeah, that is a right. very famous place. All right, but Yari, can, you know, can you mention any? Yari? Um, Isla Negra. <laughs> Isla, Isla Negra, Isla oh, Negra. Uh, Neruda's place, right, okay, okay, what other, there are so many tourist places and attractive for, for tourists in Chile, in the north, for example, let's, let's Easter start by Island. the north, huh, Easter Island, oh, yeah. I know that's, yeah, well, okay, Easter <laughs> Island, that's another one, all right, in the north, La Serena. Chile, in the continental El park, Faro. yeah, El Faro could be one, San Pedro, eh, Atacama. Yeah. Eh. In Atacama, right? In, in La Serena, you have one place that is uh, very attractive for tourists, and they always go, always go there. Faro. Ah? Huh? El Faro, ¿cómo se dice en inglés? Lighthouse. Mm, lighthouse. lighthouse. Yeah, but near La Serena, like in... Uh, El Valle de Limbo. Huh? Valle del Elqui? Yeah, in Elqui Valley. What is there in Elqui Valley? Uh, where you can see the, 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 the sky and you can see the stars. They say that it's the most, uh, it's the best place to see the sky in there. Mamayuca, for example. You have Mamayuca there. The, the uh, ah, astronomy, astronomy place, yeah or you can, oh. you can uh, face, see the, the ocean. Okay, that's one part. More, uh, more to the north. I was gonna say La Salitrera Humberstone. Yeah, yeah, Humberstone, yeah. That is in Iquique, right? Humberstone. And uh, that's, 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 well, in, in Iquique, about the world. The Humberstone, the beaches in in the in Iquique, and uh, well, I, um, I forgot Atacama, in Atac the the, the, the flower desert, the flower desert, the Seto Frio, and near that there is a town, a small town that people uh, stay there, All right? And then they visit it, visit the flowery desert. Okay, so those are like 
And down south, you have what other places in down south? In Chile. Now, for example, uh, with the with the with the rains, you can go to the Laja Falls. Now they're wonderful, lots of water. Las Siete Tazas, the the Chiloé Island. Uh, I forgot the name of the down south in Punta Arenas, where you you go and and you visit the 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 ice, you know, falling down, etc. So there are wonderful places in Chile that you can visit. Okay. Um, now the other question: What have you done to help the environment? Have you done anything to help the environment, Rose? Have you I done think anything? The microphone, it's like dying or something because we can hear you like kind of like cutting off. Oh. So, yeah. But I think you asked for number two, and. Uh, I think we have done things to help the environment by maybe saving water or trying to eat less meat or help helping the animals. I don't know. Those do you, are do things you walk? We... Do you bicycle? Do you cycle a lot or not? I do try you... to recycle a lot, yes. Yeah. And what about cycling? Oh, no, no, I don't do any. any... <laughs> <laughs> so how do you move from one place to another? I use public transportation. All right, public transportation. Okay, and what about you, Tiare? What do you do to help the environment? What have you done? Um, I use public transportation too, but if a place is near of my home, I prefer to walk. All right, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. We have to walk, I think, all right? Yes. Now, they said we've been in, at home all the time, you know, just sitting, doing nothing, or working only with the computer. Uh, I miss walking sometimes. Okay, it's very good. You know what I do? I start going around my house. <laughs> I walk around my house and there are <laughs> some little stairs, so I go up and down the stairs, you know. That's what I do. But last night, well, as I started, you know, walking around the house, I opened the gate, it's a metal gate where I, I um, put the car. I open it, but then I forgot to close it. So when I was like, was it like one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, my wife, because I sleep with my father in, a, in another room. I have to take care of my dad. So I was sleeping in there and my wife said, hey, you forgot to close it, the gate. Oh, you know, and the gate was moving with the wind. So it was, it was making a noise, a terrible noise. So I had to get up. I had to get up at two o'clock in the morning and go down, go down and start, you know, and, and, and close the gate. Oh, pretty bad. Uh, okay. Talking about your last vacation, where did you go? Did you go out with your last vacation last summer? Any of you? Yeah, for example, did you go somewhere? I or told you, you a hundred times. <laughs> I went to talk a while. Ah, I remember that, to see your boyfriend. Now I know. Uh, yes. <laughs> and you had a great time, I, I imagine. Yes. I, ah. know, I knew a, a lot of places. Okay, what did you like? What did you like the most in, in, in that place? Uh, Concepcion or Talcahuano? Um, both of them, but Talcahuano is more peaceful for me. Yeah. Concepcion is a Santiago. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Talcahuano is like Valparaíso. It's very similar. The problem with Talcahuano, yes. for, what, for what I know, because I used to go there many years ago, the smell. It smells terrible, all right? Or do they still have problems with the smell? And yeah. only in the puerto. Yeah, yeah. But other places are so beautiful. All right, okay. Kimberly, what about you? Did you go out this summer or not? No, I didn't do anything exciting. So you stayed home? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Okay. I just went to like the local beach and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think that that's enough. Uh, talking about the vocabulary or sorry, about the things that we learned in this unit. In case I can talk about recent activities and activities experiences like present perfect and continuous. We learned about that. Uh, the events that happened at a specific time in the past, simple past. We worked with, with these three sentences in this unit. 
So I think that you learn them. And in terms of vocabulary, you can talk about trouble problems uh, and you can ask for and give explanations, right? That is what you learned grammatically, all right? Questions with how long, etc. Here you have some questions that you can do. Okay, so that would be it in relation to unit five. Um, we are supposed now to go into, well, I'm going to take just some little more time and we're going to start unit six. I think you are already working with Miss Patty in unit six. And we're going to, I have to take six C, which is this one. Um, it says a caffeine fueled world. Let's talk about a little bit about, about caffeine. What do you know about caffeine? Do you know anything about it? Can you no, tell me, no. Kimberly? Nothing? No, not much. What, what about you, Thierry? What did you say? Uh, do you know anything about caffeine? Um, no, I only know that you can sleep. Ah, you can't. Yeah, you know something. When you when you have caffeine in your body, you can't sleep well. They keep you awake. All right. And uh, in here, I'm going to see, we're going to read this, but not today, okay? But um, we're going to see what is coming, all right? Let's see here. Is it, uh, discuss your answer to this question. Is your lifestyle very different from that of your parents' generation? In what ways? I don't know why they ask this, but it seems that nowadays, what, can you see the difference with your parents' style of life? Or what you have talked to them? Can you see a difference in the style of life? You're asking for number one? Well, I mean, in here, the question is, is your lifestyle very different from that of your parents' generation? In what ways? So I'm putting you personally. Have you talked to your parents about their lifestyle or what you know about their lifestyle? Is it different from, from, the, from your lifestyle? Yes, I think it was very different back then because first of all, uh, my family grew up in a very poor neighborhood, so they didn't have access to many things that now are very just normal for us. So that's one thing. Uh, they also didn't have like technology and stuff like that. So it was hard to maybe um, know more information and to communicate and all of that. And also maybe um, the way they were raised, it's different from what we uh how we were brought up so um i think maybe back then parents were more more strict yeah. and now it's not well it's not yeah. they're not strict but they have less rules than before yeah well i have had the possibility to live both lives like your parents life and now because i'm still working uh but i think that do you think that for example life is faster now than in the past or what you have heard Kimberly? Yes, I think life now is very fast. All right. Like okay. Before so days, I think they were in your eternal. case. In your case, what about your sleeping time? Do you sleep during how, how many hours do you sleep? And uh, what are the times in which you sleep? I usually sleep around uh, twelve a.m. to like I don't know if I have classes early to like eight or something. Yeah, okay. But do you sleep at night? The whole night, I mean? Yeah. Or do you function until later? I mean, my idea is that some people start working until late at night. So, therefore, no. they, they get up late the next day. What about you? I cannot do that. I, cannot do that. I, I don't function at night. I'm not like a night owl or something. No, I cannot yeah, okay. do it. Okay, so you, your, your sleeping times are very strict. Yes. Okay. What time do you usually um, fall asleep? Uh, around 12. Around, around 12? Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the idea. Well, we're going to talk about this uh, next class because we're, okay. we're out of time now. And mm -hmm. so that's it. Uh, uh, that's it for, that's it for today. Um,
any questions so far uh, that you would like to ask, I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop recording. And uh, how can I stop recording here? Here. So if you want to ask me any question so far, we can do it. All right. Okay.